Hello YouTube students, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at radian measure. In particular, I want to focus more on the concept of what is a radian, how are they defined, and why do we use radians as opposed to degree measure. Well, radians come about from the unit circle, that's how they're defined. So let's go ahead and take a look over here. We have the unit circle on the Cartesian or the XY plane. I've highlighted the critical points because if we're centered at the origin, we're going to hit the point one zero zero one negative one zero and zero negative one. Now typically we're used to sketching an angle in degree measure and the way this works on the Cartesian plane, this is one of the things we're going to need. When we sketch an angle on the Cartesian plane we extend out to, along the x-axis and we spin counterclockwise when we're going in the positive direction. So let's say we go a, an angle of theta where theta is between zero and ninety degrees Typically, when we measure an angle, we're used to measuring this in degrees. This little distance here, we would measure, let's say, 60 degrees. And if we spun all the way around the circle, we would go 360 degrees. But what radians focuses on is not necessarily this degree measure at the point of this vertex, like that little micro distance here. Radians will focus on the length of this segment of the circle. So radians, in some sense, measures arc measure on the unit circle. And whenever we spin out an angle of theta, imagine this red ink following us as we spin out some angle of theta. So if we were to go 360 degrees, this red ink would follow us all the way around the circle. So I'll write it up here. We have that radians refers to the arc measure. But keep in mind, what is the arc measure of a circle? Well, the arc measure, the entire arc of the circle, would be the circumference of the circle. So to understand radians, it's important that we have this equation for circumference. In particular, we're looking at circumference equals 2 pi r. But what do we say? We're on the unit circle. And on the unit circle, the definition of the unit circle tells us that the radius is equal to 1. So the entire circumference of this unit circle is simply, circumference is 2 pi, and now instead of r, we can replace it with 1, since that is the radius. And we have that the circumference of the unit circle is 2 pi. So to derive a conversion chart or conversion factor to go from radians to degrees, we need to consider which particular degree values match up with which particular radian values. So imagine I have a pair of scissors and I cut this circle at the point one zero. I cut it and I take the point one zero and I start it here and then instead of looping the circumference I'm just going to stretch it into a straight line. And now we just found that the circumference is 2 pi. So we'll say that this is zero and we're going to 2 pi. And now keeping in mind, what do we say about radian measure? Well, every time we spin out an angle of theta, we're measuring the length of this red segment here along the circumference of the circle. So if we spin 360 degrees, we're going to cover this entire circumference. So for 360 degrees, we, can, we cover the entire circumference of 2 pi. So therefore, 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. Now we could also look at other values. This is where multiplying fractions comes in. Let's say we go half of the circle. Most of you, I'm sure, could figure out that when we spin halfway around the circle, that corresponds to 180 degrees. So at the halfway point, we're looking at 180 degrees. But what happens when we go half of the circumference of the unit circle? Well, then we're looking at one half of 2 pi, which would give us pi. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Now we could also do this for other values. Let's say we go even further and now we're looking at we're looking at pi radians equals 180 degrees now and let's say we divide both sides by 2. We treat it like a like an algebra equation. Well this tells us that pi over 2 radians is equal to 180 degrees divided by 2 which is 90 degrees. 
So that means when we cut this segment in half, we're looking at 90 degrees, and we're looking at pi over 2 radians. And now we could also do this for some measurement halfway between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Well, what happens if we do 180 degrees plus 90 degrees? This would be 270 degrees. So that means, what if we did pi radians, because this is equal to 180 degrees, plus, and now for 90 degrees, we can look at pi over 2 radians. Well, we could use equivalent fractions now. Pi is really, we could look at it as 2 pi divided by 2, because these 2's in some sense would just cancel right back out. And now 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So this tells us that at 270 degrees, we also have 3 pi over 2 radians. And these are some of the critical values for converting from radians to degree measure. But in particular, this one here is probably the most useful. When we use our conversion factors to convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians, we always, well, we usually, most teachers will show it, we consider the fact that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. But for now, we just want to focus on this concept of radian measure as part of the circumference of the unit circle. So now, why do we use radians? Well, think about a graph of, let's say, sine of x. When we look at a graph of sine of x, typically we graph this, we're used to graphing this in degrees. But what do you notice? If we spin 360 degrees, this is equal to 2 pi radians. But let's look, what is 2 pi radians? 2 pi radians, this is roughly 6.28. Keeping in mind that we could estimate pi to be 3.14, so 2 times 3.14 would be roughly 6.28. So when we graph, let's say, we'll look at this as y equals sine of x, which I won't go into too much detail on how to graph this, I do cover that in an alternate video, but if we're looking at Let's say we're going, we'll stop it here. The reason why we're interested in radians is because our scale is going to go, the range is going to go from 1 to negative 1, and now our domain is going to get cut off at roughly 6.28. So when we're looking at a graph of this, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And now when we graph this, this is going to be an accurate graph, meaning, well, you know what, it's going to make more sense when we look at the corresponding degree graph. So we start at the origin, we loop up, we're looping down, and it takes on this nice sinusoidal shape, this wave motion, and it continues this way. But if we were to graph, and I'm not going to go through the whole graph, but let's say we graph the same function, so we're going from 1 to negative 1. But now we use degrees. Keep in mind, this scale goes up to 6.28 roughly when we use radians. But if we're going up to 360 degrees, it would be way bigger. It would be almost 60 times bigger than this scale here. So I would have to keep going, keep going and going and going off the page. And it would, it would take on this like really obnoxious, loopy shape. And this is me being polite, like it would just really just go off the page. So at least for graphing the trigonometric functions, radians is the way to go. If you ever graph a function on your calculator and you're not in radian mode, you won't even be able to see it on the page. You'd have to really stretch your page out to like negative 360 to 360. So in terms of graphing the functions, radians is the way to go. And I won't cover this now, but there's also a topic in calculus called Taylor series where it really helps to have radian measure because it just makes all the algebra way simpler. So radian simplifies everything that we've learned so far with angular measure. So, Okay, well, just to summarize, remember, radians is the measure of the arc length on the unit circle, 
and the way that we could derive radian measure as a conversion between degrees and radians, we look at the circumference of the unit circle and we could just start splicing it and comparing corresponding values. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope that it was helpful.